I give all glory to my Father God who lives in heaven. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I acknowledge the Holy Spirit who strengthens, guides, protects, and inspires me each and every day. To everyone who can hear my voice, I greet you in peace. Jesus Christ. You know, people tend to look at the end result instead of seeing the struggle that people go through in order to become successful. And then when they become successful because they are not familiar with the struggle, they think it's easy. And they say, I want some of that. On Resurrection Sunday, let us not be so happy that we forget the struggle that Jesus Christ went through before he stood in victory. Jesus Christ was born, baptized, and preached the good news and said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. God watched as man rejected not only his son, but what his son had to say. God watched and did nothing as his son was beat and tortured for crimes he did not commit. When someone accuses you of a crime, when you're in your household and your parents falsely accuse you of something that your brother or sister did, how do you feel when your mother who you know loves you believe you did something that you did not do? More often than not, you begin to cry out and say, I'm not guilty. But Jesus Christ he didn't say anything to anyone. God watched and did nothing as his son was beat and tortured for crimes he didn't commit. And 700 years earlier, the prophet Isaiah described what took place when Jesus Christ was accused. Isaiah 52, 14 says, his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any human being and his form was marred beyond any human likeness. When they finished with Jesus Christ, he was unrecognizable as a man, much less a savior. Yes. Isaiah 53, starting at verse 3 through 12, says, He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with with grief and we hid as it were our faces from him he was despised and we did not esteem him surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we esteem him stricken Everybody on Resurrection Sunday is throwing their hands up in the air saying he is risen, but people did not esteem him when he was alive. Smitten by God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. 
He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. And we like sheep have all gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people, he was stricken and they made his grave with the wicked. But with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. That is the struggle that Jesus Christ went through before he even got to the cross. God watched and stayed still as the wickedness in the hearts of men led them to hang Jesus on the cross, killing him, which was part of God's plan. When he died, all of your sins, all of my sins, all of the sins of humankind were nailed to the cross with Jesus who served as the sacrifice, the atonement for our sin. As Jesus Christ bled, as Jesus Christ died, the earth shook and the veil was ripped in two indicating his sacrifice was sufficient to the Lord God Almighty. And a pathway to God was created, making it possible for you and I to have a positive relationship with God. Think about that for a moment. When you think about Resurrection Sunday, think about that when Jesus Christ stood in victory. Think about all he went through for you. Jesus Christ didn't give up on the cross. You were too valuable for him to give up on the cross. He saw it through. And for anyone who is here, who begins to think that you are not worth anything and that you should give up, I want to remind you it doesn't matter what people do to you. It matters what God did for you. And his son died for you and for me. But God's plan of salvation didn't end there. On the third day, God stopped being still. 
See, God watched all of this unfold. He sat back with his arms crossed, rocking back and forth as his son went through torment that the average human being could not survive. He stayed on the cross longer than anyone thought he was going to be on that cross. And he died for you and I. And then he was, people say he was not dead. Jesus Christ was dead. He died. And the Bible tells us the day after nothing happened. But on the third day, I want you to know that God has a plan and God is not going to move before he wants to. On the third day, God did something. And I want you to know that many of you are going through a Saturday. You are going through a Saturday and you have prayed to God to move on your behalf. And God is just sitting by. And many of you cannot wait and are giving up because God is not moving at the speed that you want him to. But God wants you to know that all authority is in his hand. He sees the beginning and the end. He sees everything that you are going through and he is making a way for you. And he wants you to know when you get ready to give up, just hold on. Just because it is a Saturday in your life and you do not see God moving, it does not mean God is not moving on your behalf. So Saturday, God didn't do anything. But on the third day, God stood up and said, it is time for me to go to work. Don't you know that when God says in your life, it is time for me to go to work, there is nothing that anyone can do about it. And what God wants to happen in your life, don't you know it will happen? When God stands up for you, earth and heavens begin to quake. The enemy looks at out and says, what in the world is going on? The enemy feels when God stands up and the enemy begins to look out and try to see who God stood up for. But too many times when God is standing up and when God is walking by, the Christian wants to sit silent, not saying anything, pretending that everything is all right. When you know darn well, nothing is working out. God wants you to know that when he stands up, even if he stands up for somebody else, you better raise your hand in the air and say, God, don't pass me by. If you are handing out blessings, if you are delivering, if you are healing, Lord, please don't pass me by. I'm not asking for what you are doing for someone else. I know you can do it for me because you are all powerful and everything is in your hand. So I see you walking by, God, and I'm raising my hand, Lord. I don't want you to miss me, Lord. I need you, Lord. On the third day, God stopped being still from his throne. He looked at his son, not with wrath, but with love. And then he reached down from heaven. And with the hands that Jesus placed his spirit into, when he said, Father, into thy hands, I commit my spirit. God raised Jesus Christ from the dead by placing the spirit of the one and only Savior back into the physical body. God wants you to know that when he reaches down for you, whatever he is, his intention, it will be done. But some of us don't want to lay down like Jesus Christ was laying down dead and let God operate in your life. You want to get up from God's spiritual operating table before the time 
Don't you know that the devil knows when God, he can sense when God is about to move in your life. And he looks at the wind and he looks at the rain and he looks at the clouds and he says, hold on, wait a minute. Something is about to happen in your life. And then he goes at you harder, causing you to miss the move and the blessing of God in your life. You don't understand. You got to be where God is when God is blessing. If God tells you to stay right there, do not move no matter what. And too many Christians are moving from where God wants them to be. And they are missing out on the move of God. On God reaching down and blessing you and healing you and setting things straight. Because you decided to move because you was listening to the wrong person or you listened to that other side in your brain that was telling you, go lean to your own understanding. God is taking too long. God wants you to know that you have to just stay still and let God work. When he placed Jesus Christ's spirit back into his body and he healed his body, he was no longer unrecognizable. Don't you know that when God touches you, you will be unrecognizable to the people you used to run with? You were made different when God... Mm. When God reached down from heaven and blessed you and touched you, you were immediately made different from everybody else. But you want to cry out to God that your friends are leaving you when your friends weren't your friends in the first place. God has set you aside unto him and he has pushed everybody else away from you, but you still crying. And those people were never good for you in the first place. They were only there for a season and you want them to be there forever. But when Jesus Christ was moved and touched by God, don't you know that when God moves, he makes announcements? God made an announcement which we can find in Matthew chapter 28. It says, now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. See, when God moved, he shook the whole earth. When God moves for you, he shakes the atmosphere. When he moves for you, the enemy knows that God has moved for you. The funny thing is you don't even feel that the atmosphere has changed, but your enemy does. And your enemy flees from you because he says, hold up, wait a minute. God is in the place. Don't you know that you could be in your car and if you are not asking God to be with you in your car, you are missing out on a blessing? No matter where the Christian goes, you should ask God to be there. Because you don't see the unseen enemy that is looking to harm you, harm your children, harm your family. Take away and rob and steal from you and leave you poor and low in spirit and not having faith, hitting you with all kind of ailments. You think the ailments are from God. The ailment is not from God. Even Job found out that the ailment wasn't from God. God permitted the devil to test him. But too many of you want to give up because you are being stricken. Sometimes you're struck not because of what you did, but so other people can see the power of God move in you. God is not going to take out the weak. 
He's not going to torment and test the weak because they will not make it. And we serve a compassionate God. He's going to test those who are strong in spirit. He's going to test those who are strong in faith. He's going to test those that even when they're not feeling well, they do the good work that God has told them to do. He's going to test them. So when you are going through, know that you are going through so someone else can see your ability to go through and know that God is with you. How many of you know that God is with you? Raise your hand. So God made an announcement. He shook the earth to let the earth know my son has risen. But people did not know why the earth shook. But Mary and Mary found out when they went to the tomb and they saw the big rock rolled away. And anyone who would say, oh, the rock that rolled away, when the angel moved it, it shook the earth. The angels could have picked the rock up and moved it by themselves. That's how strong they are. It was an announcement. God shook the earth just like he shook the earth just before Jesus Christ died to let you know that the veil had been ripped and you could come into him. And behold, there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled the stone from the door and sat on it. Mm. Don't you know that God will send angels to remove from you what has been tormenting you and they will sit on it to show the power of the most high God. So the angel didn't move the stone and just let it drop and break. He sat on it to show the power of the most high God. Too many of you are so happy that that thing has been removed. Don't you know that God is suppressing it from ever surfacing again in your life? But too many of us want to go back to where God deliver us from. And, mm. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the God shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. The second announcement, God shook the earth. And at the time he shook the earth, nobody saw what he did to Christ. But he shook the earth to let people know something had occurred. And then the angel made an announcement that he is risen. Don't you know that God will send people in your life when you think that things are not going well and they will proclaim over your life God is at work? The angel said he is risen. Why are you looking for him in a place where you, you find dead people? Yeah. You looking in the wrong place. Oh, my goodness. Too many of you are looking in the wrong place. God is not where you're looking. God is not in that man or that woman that you are chasing after. Because let me tell you, the man or woman that God had for you when he created you, they are right around the corner. Why don't you stop looking and grabbing things that you should never be looking at or grabbing? You should wait on God. In all things, people are taking that job and you should have never taken the job and you got fired a year later and you are boo-hooing. You got fired from the job. You was not supposed to take the job. God would have provided for you while you were unemployed until the job for you came. I'm talking to somebody today. He is not here, 
for he is risen as he said, come see the place where the Lord lay and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples word. The subject today is the announcement. The announcement. The first announcement was when the earth shook. The second announcement was when the angel said he is risen. The third announcement is left to God's witnesses. The message that his witnesses are to announce is the goodness of God. Yes. See, people always want to say he is risen. But why did he raise Christ from the dead? He raised him because of the goodness of God. God did not want you to die in your sin and stay separated from him for all eternity. Even when you were directly opposing God, it's one thing to say that you don't know God, but it's another when you know God and you still don't do what God tells you to do. And many of us know God and we have done those things what God did not tell us to do. We have disobeyed God to his face. But God is so good. He said, that is OK. You temper tantrum little two year old. Yeah. I am still not going to give up on you, even though you are a grown person. I am going to continue to show you the goodness that comes out of my love. The message that Mary and Mary understood was that the word was not snuffed out like a candle like Satan wanted it to be. They understood that the word rose from the dead as the Bible prophecy. It un they understood that the inhabitants of the earth were becoming aware of the good news that Jesus Christ was raised from, raised from the dead and they understood that the word was touching people. It could give people hope. How many of you know the people that you walk by? Many of them are like the walking dead. They have no hope. How many of you go, on a, go to work on Monday on the train or the bus and you look in the faces of the people and they look grim, they look dead, they look without hope and you wonder to yourself, what is going on? You just came from church the day before on Sunday and you're filled with hope and renewed faith and belief in Jesus Christ. But all of a sudden you walk into the train car, you walk on the bus and everybody looks dead. People don't have hope. But Mary and Mary, they knew that this risen savior could give people hope and could change people and could save people. Yes. Isaiah 53, 11, the prophecy. It said after Jesus Christ went through all of those things, he shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. When God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, Jesus Christ woke up and said, wow, Father, we did it. I am satisfied with the plan. But God, Jesus Christ, didn't stay there. Too many of us, we experience the blessing of God and we become satisfied. We become complacent. We stop caring and thinking about those who are less fortunate and who do not have hope. 
we stop caring about the babies in Christ, the people who are appealing to Christ, but they are still figuring it out. And we leave them by themselves because we are so satisfied to where we've come. And Jesus Christ was not satisfied because the Bible tells us that in Luke 24, 27, he began to teach. It says in beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning themselves. He continued to work even though he was satisfied that his God, his God, his father and him had did what was necessary. How many of you know that even when you're doing what is necessary, that is not necessarily acceptable to God? Don't get so happy when you said, oh, God, you told me to do it and I did it. Thank you, God. You want to pat yourself on the back just because you did what was necessary. It doesn't mean there's not more left for you to do. And it also tells us that Jesus Christ, although he was satisfied, he began to share the miracle that occurred. Many of you. When it's time for testimonies, God has worked a miracle in your life and you sit down there and you stay quiet. You say, oh, I don't I'm not dressed good today. My hair is out of place today. Or that person who is looking at me and I don't know if she or he likes me. And you sit down on what God has done in your life, not realizing that God did the miracle in your life for you to share the testimony. So Jesus Christ, he went all over the place. Acts chapter one says to whom he presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Don't get so happy that you stop sharing the goodness of God. Jesus Christ didn't stop working. He empowered believers. In Matthew 28, 18, it says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. And many people take this as a command of Jesus Christ, which it is. But you're missing something important when he said, go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations. You're supposed to be announcing, by the way. Go, therefore, and make an announcement, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. They call that the Great Commission. But don't you realize, besides telling you what you ought to be doing, Jesus Christ took some of his authority and gave it to you. Gave it to you. You have authority that you're not even using in your life. Some of the simple authority that you have is just praying and laying hands on yourself and other people, believing that they will be healed. And you're not even doing it. You're not even doing it because the question is, are you too tired or do you not believe? And do you not believe because you are not living right? to wield the authority that Christ gave you. I can't answer that question for you. Only you can answer that question for yourself. But I want you to understand that God gave you authority. God gave you authority. Jesus Christ was satisfied with the work of salvation. He went on to teach and to preach and to empower people. He gave you everything that you needed before he left, before he ascended up into the clouds with the promise that he would return. He did all of that for you. 
question I have for you is, how satisfied is Jesus with you? Are you doing like Mary and Mary did in going out making the announcement that Jesus Christ is the risen Savior and he can save your soul? He can reconnect you with God. Are you doing that? The other question I have for you, you don't have to answer. I don't want you to incriminate yourself. <laughs> the other question that I have for you is have you really accepted the message? See, there's a lot of people that watch the movie, but they don't get the message from many of the movies. Some people read books, but when the teacher asks, what did you read? They don't understand in the reading comprehension test what they read. God is asking, are you receiving and internalizing the message of the cross. The other thing God is asking you by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and you have to ask yourself, is Christ satisfied with you? Are you living in the message? See, it's one thing to go out and announce the message, but when you're not living in the message, you're no longer called a Christian, the world calls you a hypocrite. So God wants you to not just believe the message, not receive, not only receive the message, he wants you to live the message. Amen. And then, because you can't announce the message without living the message, because if people see that you're not living in the message, they don't even take the message from you. Amen. Nothing what you're saying is true. Even if it's true, they won't accept it as true. They will say, you are lying. Get the heck out of my face. You don't know what you're talking about. You're telling me to live the life and you can't even live it yourself. But you go to church every Sunday. You're not even doing good and I'm not even going to church and I'm doing good. What are you saying to me? See, there's a trap. Not only must you receive the message and understand the message and, and go out and share the message you have to live the message. As I come to a close, Romans chapter 6, verses 10 through 11 says, The Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, He will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. If anyone who has not accepted Jesus Christ's message, even if you got baptized, even if you come to church, Resurrection Sunday is a day for you to recommit yourself to the risen Savior. Because you don't have to die and stay dead. Who wants to die and stay dead? Let me see your hand. Matter of fact, let me ask you another question. Who wants to die at all? I don't want to die. You know that scripture that says that when Jesus Christ comes again and he descends with a shout, that those who are living will have to wait before those who are dead to rise in Christ? I don't want to be dead in Christ, honestly. I don't want to be dead. I don't want to experience death. I want to be in the camp where Jesus Christ says, oh, you're still alive, come on up here. That means, you're laughing, but that means that I am confident that I am living the message so should Christ come right now that he'll take me. And the question is, are how confident are you that if Christ was to come right now that he would take you? He is risen. He is risen. Go out and share in the highways and the byways. God lives. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.